I tell you what, it's a little bit worrying when you get something in the mail and it looks like this. G'day guys. Trust me to pick a day where there's no sun to do a video about solar panels. So this morning I woke up, it was beautiful blue skies, I have no idea what's happened. But anyway, let's talk about solar panels. So, this was the first solar panel that I got. I've had a couple over the years, so this is a projector unit. It's a foldable solar panel, 80 watt, cost me 400 bucks at the time. And that's done really, really well. It's cool because, you know, you can set that up in the sun, you can have your car in the shade, which is always a bonus. Then I went on to this one here. So this is a 130 watt solar panel. It's just a cheap one. I think it cost me 170 bucks at the time. So I had this permanently mounted to my last car for about a couple of years, and that went pretty well as well. So the time came to figure out what I was gonna do with Project Sign as far as solar goes. So I decided to go for semi-flexible solar panels. So this one here is from iTech World in Burswood. So what I decided to do is to go for 100 watt, but two of them. And I was just about to buy them when I was like, you know what, what if I get an expensive one and a cheap one just so I can compare them. So this one here cost me $300 delivered. They're so nice and light when you compare them to these ones here. So that one there should be a 100 watt panel. Let me just double check that. I wish I could learn to read. Well, that sucks because it actually doesn't say anything about how many watts or how many amps it actually produces. So we'll just assume that that's a 100 watt panel for the moment because I don't really know what it is. So that one cost me $300 from iTech World in Burswood. And then this one here, 99 bucks delivered from Sunyi. And I gotta say, so far the uh, winner is Sun Yi because the packaging is actually quite solid. So good job there guys, you know. <laughs> oh mate, there's even suction cups, look at that. All right, so then we got that panel there from Sun Yi. So I'm very curious to see how these will compare. So I'm just gonna have a quick look at them myself because it's the first time I've ever seen them. And just have a look, see what the differences are and go from there. So I just wanted to point out, this is the uh, fixed solar panel that I had for a couple of years. So like I said, this panel didn't cost me very much, but you can really tell that it's not the best quality panel. So there's marks here, and they're definitely not on the outside, so they're actually inside the panel. And you can see there's like lines across there. I'm not really sure if the camera's gonna pick it up, but all through here, you can just see lines there. And you can just tell by looking at the panel that it's not the best panel on the market by far. Tell you what, this is a pain in the butt to unwrap. The general saying goes with this kind of stuff, it all comes out of the same factory. Well, when you look at these two solar panels, I would definitely say they haven't come out of the same factory. This one here's got a very reflective surface on it here. This one's got a very matte surface across it. This one's got the little lines that you expect to see in the solar cells. This one hasn't got any of that. The sizes are a little bit different. This one's a bit longer. So I'm very curious to see how these two panels perform against each other. So this solar panel here, this is the Sunny $99 solar panel. This one's actually got the maximum power current, which is actually how many amps you're going to be able to possibly get out of the panel. So that's 5.68. Now I'll just show you the other panel quickly. So this is the $300 iTech World solar panel. And when I look at the specs, there's actually nothing about how many amps or how many watts it actually puts out, which is a little bit disappointing because you generally expect to see that on the back of a panel. So I have no idea what's going on there. It's very weird. So these are semi-flexible solar panels. So you may be wondering, what's the flexibility actually like? Well, that's the panel here is uh, very, very flexible. I mean, you look at that. How cool is that? That's, that's some pretty good flex. The Sun Yi $99 solar panel. Oh, it gets really tight there. So, woo. Just had some cracking there, so I don't know if this has that got that much flexibility. It doesn't look like it's damaged it, but still, it's definitely not as flexible as a $300 solar panel. So solar panels like this generally come with PV connectors. Well, there's nothing wrong with these, really. They just, they're just, yeah, I just don't like them virtually. That, that's all it comes down to, so. 
I'm not going to use them. So if you just give me a minute, guys, I'll just uh, rewire these in to my Anderson plugs. Actually, I'll just quickly show you guys what I've figured out with my Anderson plugs because I wanted to be able to connect both panels at once. So I'll just show you quickly. So we're on top of the car. This is the uh, solar input on the roof rack for the solar panels. This is what they're going to get hooked up to. And I was trying to figure out a way that I could have either one solar panel, two solar panels, but I still wanted to be able to have the option of only having one or having both. So I figured out if I make a double adapter at the end of the solar panel lead, I can actually hook that in there. So if I just want to run this solar panel, I can hook that in like that. If I want to run both, all I got to do is click that in like that. And that way both solar panels are hooked up. Then if I just want to run this one, you know, you plug that in like normal. So that was the solution I came up with. So hopefully it works out. I guess we'll see. Alrighty guys, just give me a minute to make up the new ends for the solar panels. And then hopefully the sun will come out sometime so we can actually test the things. Tell you what, you never do a good solder unless you forget to put the heat shrink on. Guarantee every time you forget to put the heat shrink on, your solder job is just going to be mint. The rain is seriously not playing ball today. So the rain's finally cleared up. Don't know what's going on with the weather this year. It's all over the shop. I've got the Anderson plugs on both of the solar panels, so they're ready to roll. So as soon as we get a blue patch of sky, I'll chuck them up on the roof and we can test them out. But I might just quickly tell you guys why I actually decided to go with the semi-flexible solar panels. Well, pretty much one of the reasons is the weight. They only weigh, oh, they weigh under two kilograms each, which is really lightweight. And the other reason is I didn't want to have a permanent setup. So with these, I can virtually, with the roof rack I've got, I can pretty much cable tie them anywhere I want. So if I'm going away for a month up north, I'll probably have my second spare tire up here, my max shack, some other bits and bobs. I can virtually put the panels wherever they fit. Otherwise, say in a couple of weeks, I'm going sea kayaking down south. I'll have my sea kayak, that'll take up one whole side of the car. Now, if you had permanently mounted roof rack, I mean solar panels, Chances are the sea kayak will be blocking them and you're not going to get as much output. While with these, I can have one panel here, cable tie the other panel there, have my max tracks up the back, and everything will be in the sun and everything will work. So that's pretty much why my setup changes a lot. So this way nothing's permanent and I, if I only want to run one panel, I can just run one panel. I don't have to always have two. So that's pretty much why, just the flexibility aspect of it. Do you get it? Flexibility aspect. <laughs> Today is just not working out with getting the constant sunshine I need to do a test like this. So let's jump forward to a day where there is constant sunshine. Alrighty, well, we got beautiful blue skies today. I'm at a beautiful location. This is Broke Inlet. It's been closed for two years and finally just got reopened a couple of weeks ago, the rangers just said, so that's awesome. So I can finally test out these solar panels because we got the weather we want. So I'll just run you through how I'm thinking about doing this test. So on the roof, both of the panels are mounted on the same flat surface pretty much. They're both in the full sunshine. I've got two cables coming down from them. So the one with this little pull thingy on it is the $99 Sunny, and this one is the $300 iTech World panel. How am I gonna actually do this test? Well, I have a battery monitor which can monitor how many amps are going in and out of the batteries. And I'll just quickly show you what our voltage and that kind of thing is looking like right now. So just to run you through the voltages we're at, we're at 12.78 volts. Uh, we've got zero amps coming in and out, zero watts coming in and out. And last night I used 27.4 amp hours and the battery is at 91%. So what that means is the battery needs a charge. So pretty much the DC to DC charger should be stuffing in as much power as it can possibly get out of the panels pretty much. And also, as far as the solar panels go on the roof, they've both been in the sun for the same amount of time. And also, I gave them both a clean this morning, so they should be performing as well as each other. So let's go ahead and plug in the $99 Sunny panel and see what it does. It's going to take a couple of minutes for the DC to DC charger to realise, hey, there's solar coming in. Let's use it. But we'll get there. Alrighty, we've got a reading. Wow, that's awesome. So at the moment, the $99 Sunny panel is putting in 6.2 amps. 6.19, 6.2, that's awesome. That's absolutely kicking it, eh? That's very cool. So, we know what that's putting in, so let's chuck it on the other one and see what that does. Alrighty, so I've just unplugged it and plugged the other one in. 
I'll just leave it for a little bit longer to see if it settles, but at the moment, we're putting in 4.7 amps. That's a massive difference. I just double checked to make sure I plugged in the right one to the right one, but that's definitely the iTech World panel at the moment. So 4.7, let's plug in the Sunny again. I can't believe this. There we go, 6.2 amps. It's got up to the same voltage all over again. I'm just gonna double check I have plugged in the right panel to the right cord again, cause I'm just gobsmacked. Legit, 6.2 amps. All right, I'm gonna do it again. So the $300 iTech World panel is actually giving me 4.7 amps. Well, the $99 Sunny panel, plugged in identically, is giving me 6.2 amps. That's a difference of one and a half amps, which when you think about it, adds up pretty fast. So, I'm using the same length of cable from each panel. They're both five meter extension leads that I've been plugging them into. And it's just, I just can't get my head around it. Like, that's just nuts. I have left it on a little bit longer and it has gone to 4.96, so pretty much 5 amps. So that's still a difference of 1.2 amps. But to mix up this test even more, when you get cheap solar panels, you pretty much most of the time get a really, really cheap solar regulator. Does it make that much difference? Well, I'm gonna plug this in and see what the difference is. It, I'm really curious to see what this is gonna put out as opposed to a really good MPPT DC to DC charger. So let's do it. Just to explain what's going on under here with the cheap solar regulator, I've got two Anderson plugs here. One hooks up to the solar, the other is just straight to the battery. So for the test with the cheap regulator, it just goes directly to the battery and to the panel. So that's all it is. All right, so I've plugged in the, let me just check. The iTech World $300 solar panel at the moment. Uh, I think the solar regulator is going to take a little while to kick in, just like the other time. All right, so at the moment we've got the iTech World solar panel plugged in, and that's putting in 5.1 amps through the cheap eBay style solar regulator that you'd normally get, which is pretty impressive. So let's chuck on the $99 Sunny panel and see how that goes. Wow, there you go. So it's just stabilized, and at the moment we're sitting on 6 amps. That's just a crazy difference. So even with the cheap regulator, the Sunyu panel is still performing so much better than the other panel. I am literally mind blown. I just want to talk about A, B and C class panels quickly. So when I ordered the Sunyu panel, I was a bit skeptical because it said it was an A class panel. But after using it, I'd say it's definitely an A class panel because it's working awesome. So what's a B class panel? Well, a B-class panel is one where there's obvious imperfections. An A-class panel is perfect, has no imperfections in it. And then a C-class panel is one where there's imperfections in it and it doesn't perform. Because and technically, an A and a B-class panel should work just as well as each other, even though there are imperfections. Does it really matter whether you get A, B or C? Well, you don't want a C-panel. In fact, I've never even seen a C-panel advertised. But A or B doesn't really matter. As long as they work, they give you the output that they say they do, who really cares? Alrighty, let's crunch some numbers. So with the MPPT DC to DC charger looking after the solar, the iTech World put in 4.71 amps. The Sunyu panel put in a oh, crazy one point, sorry, 6.19 amps. That means a difference of 1.22 amps. That is massive. So then I hooked up the cheapo eBay kind of regulator that you'd buy, expecting the results to be completely different. But the iTech World panel put in 5.1 amps and the Sunny panel put in 5.97 amps. So that's a difference of 0.81 of an amp. I am absolutely blown away by these results. The coolest thing about doing a test like this is you don't actually know what the results are gonna be until you get to this stage right here, the end of the video. So in both cases, the Sunny panel absolutely trumped the iTech World panel. Just unbelievably, even with the cheap regulator, I was quite surprised how well that did. So you may be wondering, should I just get a cheap regulator, cheap panel, I'll be sorted? Yes and no. The thing is, 
an MPPT charger or a DC to DC charger that's solar ready is going to maintain your batteries a lot better because it goes through the different stages of charging. PWM regulators, which is normally what you get with cheap panels, are pretty much an on off switch. They're not going to maintain it as well. That being said, if you are a bit strapped for cash, just, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get your voltage up, which is exactly what you want. So, if you can, cheap panels seem to be the way to go, and then go for a decent MPPT charger, and you're actually absolutely going to crank the voltage. So, it is interesting that it did do a little bit better, the MPPT, than the PWM charger, but I just can't believe these results, hey? Like, I absolutely got ripped off with that iTech World paddle. Anyway, I'm going to go sorrow in my misery, but I'll see you guys in another video, eh? Far out. <laughs>